Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we'll discuss the dark art of video feedback and delay. Understanding how to use feedback will visually enhance your visuals a lot, but there is a thin line between making something pretty and making a mess. I will go over the delay note first, then we'll discuss how to create video feedback, followed by a couple of examples and some neat little tricks that I've found along the way. But there's always more to explore. So if you got a cool feedback trick yourself, please share it in the comments down below. Let's get started. Here is the delay node. The delay node takes data and delays it by a set amount of time. As you can see, it can take almost any data type. In this example, I am sending the value 10 to a float node with a delay node in between set to one second. When I trigger the snapshot, it sends the 10. This gets delayed by one second. After this, it reaches the float node which gets updated accordingly. This example demonstrates the concept of patching nodes back into the node chain. We have two timeline nodes. Timeline 1 modulates the width of the rectangle. After timeline 1 has run its course, it sends a trigger to start timeline 2. Timeline 2 modulates the height of the rectangle. Now we want timeline 2 to restart timeline 1. We can patch the end reached of timeline 2 into timeline 1. But now something interesting happens. Wire creates a delay node for us. This is because a wire patch always runs each frame from left to right. The timeline modulation goes into the smooth that goes into the rectangle which gets updated onto your screen. This all happens in one frame. But by patching things back into the figurative cycle we mess this up, which gets corrected by the delay node. When we click on the delay node and check the inspector, we see that the delay time is set to zero seconds. Even though it is set to zero, it is still a single frame of delay. Of course, we can increase this manually, let's say to one second and see the result. I have made this patch to demonstrate the concept of video feedback. We start with a spokes node that we move around with a transform node. The transform node gets its x and y values from two Berlin noise nodes and its rotation from a saw oscillator. Finally, we render the shape yellow. For now, ignore the blur and drop shadow nodes, I have bypassed them. Now we have our spokes node moving around on a solid black background. Next, I will patch the output of the mixer back into the mixer again. A delay node is created, but this time without a slider. Our circle now functions as a brush over a canvas. What is happening is that the output of the mixer gets delayed by one frame and is then being fed back into the mixer. This causes everything to stick to the screen. When I lower the opacity of the delay layer, our drawing will quickly make way for a trail. Note that the sweet spot of this is often between the 0.8 and 0.99 range. Also take note that as of the making of this video, there is no slider on the delay node, but this might change in the future. Now back to that blur and drop shadow node. What are they doing here? Well, I wanted to create a fake 3D effect with feedback. So I added a drop shadow to fake some depth. Next, I added a blur to smoothly transition from the hard lines of the shape into a soft gradient. Pretty cool. In this example, I am using the transport time node. This node outputs the seconds as they pass. This is a really nice modulation source for the meta balls over here that need some sort of time data to be able to move. I've created another feedback loop, but this time I've added an effect inside of the loop. I am offsetting the different color channels to the right. But because we do this in a feedback loop, it infinitely repeats itself. I colorize the result and mix it with a black background. Here I have the same concept yet again, a feedback loop with an effect in the loop. This time I use the displace effect to smear the pixels of this clip downwards. In this example, I use a circle and a spokes node together with a union and some edge nodes to create a complex shape. I use the transport beat node together with the attack release nodes to pump up the shape on every beat. 
I render the shape and apply a drop shadow to it to separate it from the background. Next, I create a feedback loop with the mirror quad effect inside of the loop to create this droste effect. I hope that you understand by now how essential the drop shadow effect is in this case. By bypassing that, you will end up with just a white screen. Do you know those useless machine boxes that turn themselves off after you turn them on? You can make this using wire. Upon triggering, we send true via the snapshot node to the switch. The same trigger gets delayed and sends a false via another snapshot node after a second. That was it for this tutorial. I hope you had fun. There are more basic tutorials to come, but I think that you are more than ready to start on the instancing course. This patch is a little preview of that. I am instancing this little circle into 50 dots that are in turn modulated by 50 instances of two burden noise nodes, making them draw and dance for you. Instancing unlocks the true potential of wire and is necessary to work with advanced features such as FFT and slices. I hope you are excited to get started and I'll see you in the next one.